Hi everybody, my name is Christine Amor. I am going to be the new camp director and caretaker over at Camp Kent Education Center in Amesbury, Mass. This is my friend Max. We wave to the camera. We both have our masks on today because we're trying to stay safe with all of the craziness going on in the world. We care about each other, so we don't want to get each other sick, right, Max? Yes. We're both feeling healthy, and we hope you are too, though. We heard about this eco festival, and we're pretty excited. Do you recycle at your house? Yes, I do, and I make a lot of stuff out of my recycling. Ooh, you make a lot of stuff with your recycled materials. Yeah, and I made a spaceship yesterday afternoon. Wow. So I so it has the propeller that you can find little propellers that are from what was that an old toy or something yeah it's from an old toy that i had and you can find sticks and then you have your plates for the wings yeah the plate you just gotta find a plate cut the cut in half so you have two wings mm -hmm. and you have you can use can for the rockets and a big box for the body of it. That's amazing. Yeah. So Max, this is pretty cool. He got creative without even knowing about the projects that I had in mind. I just asked him to assist me on this. So that's awesome. You're already experienced. We're going to give you guys about three or four, depending on how much time we have, um, examples of how to make cool nature activities with things that you're going to find in your recycling bins. Clipboards. Okay, what do we need for the clipboards? I think we need a piece of cardboard. And what do you have here? A piece of cardboard. And I think we. And if you have anything that clips. Clips like here, we'll show you up close. We have these little office clips, clothes pins, and a chip clip. Okay. So Max is choosing a chip clip for this. We just have an old Trisket box that's flattened down. And I don't know. Do you want? You don't have to, but do you want to make a clean? line with scissors <laughs> he's just gonna make it the shape he wants and you can use whatever scissors you have at home these are my little craft scissors and um we'll also be using some twine or rope thin rope you might have around that we'll be attaching to the writing utensil and then attaching to the cardboard what kinds of things would you want to do with a clipboard out in nature, Max? You would probably want to just have a little clipboard so you could like, write down details of animals that you see. Details of animals that you see or plants, right? Or maybe would you even consider like taking a leaf and clipping it to the clipboard to take yes. back for later observations? Yeah. Cool. Or you could take a picture of something and clip it. Yeah, oh my gosh, good idea. So, want to just show everyone how it's so simple. You just clip the paper onto the clipboard. Okay, and then would you like to chop however long you want the rope to be? Imagine that it's up here. You can even put it right in this hole. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that. There's a little hole on the top of our chip clip that we're going to attach our writing utensil to. I'll do the not for you if you want to chop it. And then, where's your pencil or marker of choice? Want to just use a piece of tape and attach it? So he's going to tape and tie to be safe, but now he has a clipboard that he can take out into nature and an attached writing utensil. So I guess you're going to go have fun, some fun with that. We'll show you the next activity in just a minute. Okay, we're back with our second activity, and this is an insect catcher. You can use it to explore in water, shallow water, with a parent or a guardian with you, obviously for safety. And basically, we will use, what, what do you have for materials over here? Have a yogurt container nice. that you can use and an ice cream container. Awesome. Just plastic containers. So we, we tried to use a hole puncher for this, but it was too thick. So you can still use a hole puncher if you have something 
that's not as thick. Maybe like a little teeny tiny yogurt container would work. But for these purposes, we decided we wanted to use this big one because we could put a little bit of water in and then see if we find any insects that live in water. Or we could go into the forest or wherever we are, maybe the beach, and find insects in the sand, in the dirt, in the trees, wherever. And the other thing you need is string. String. Thin rope and rope. scissors. Yeah, perfect. So Max is a professional. He already knows all the materials before I do. What would I do without you, Max? Um, so this container, like I said, was kind of thick. So my, like he said, was kind of thick. So I actually just took scissors and I chopped holes on both sides for Max, but he's going to do the rest. So you gotta, if you know how to tie a knot, tie a knot, but if you don't know how to ask a parent or a guardian, and they can do it for you. This looks great. It'll kind of be like a little handle that you can drag in through the water or just like carry around if you have enough stuff in your hands, right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I'm hold one end for you. Oh, you got it. You're gonna double knot it. Double knotting is for extra safety. Yeah, so of course, if you were out in the water, in the shallow water, and you found some cool stuff that's great to look at for a little while, but then you want to pour it right back into its home, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and the good thing about something plastic like this is, of course, we cleaned everything first, but then we can empty it out, dry it, and then use for dry materials and insects. Like, maybe we even find some worms, something cool like that. Oh yeah, and you can and you can use a paper clip or something. Plus, if you don't have a long enough piece of rope, you can use a paper clip to tie another piece right here. Yeah. And then you have it. Yeah, you can even attach it to your backpack if you're on a camping trip with your friends. And um, what was the other thing? So the good thing about then if you're done, and of course you put the animal away, you can cap it and. Um, save it for your next adventure the cool thing too about it is that maybe you're down somewhere where you don't have a guide or somebody who might know their insects really well or maybe even leaves or acorns or whatever it is that you're checking out you can carry it for you know i don't know let's say like up to a couple hours at the most depending on what you've gotten here you can bring it back to your books or your friends and check in with them and see if they know what they're looking at it's a nice way to identify things in nature we're back again and we're gonna show you how to make a bird feeder. Bird feeder, backyard bird feeder. So we just have an old almond milk container. It could be any kind of milk, really, or just some kind of similar box. What we were doing before we started recording was looking around the house trying to find things that were pointy enough because the cardboard is actually really thick. So we can't use our scissors safely and we can't use our hole punchers without hurting our fingers and hands so we went in the drawers and we found this i don't even know what it is it's a, i think it's a chainsaw sharpener a chainsaw it actually looks like a little knife sharpener regardless what we did was this was something that i did max couldn't do he's going to do the rest of it though we went through the top and poked a hole okay and then we took our string that we're gonna attach our bird feeder into the tree with. We wrapped it around the sharpener or whatever pokey thing you can find. And then we string it through. I can't find the hole. Hmm. Oh, it's in some sort of a little fold, okay. Here we go. <laughs> Okay. And, and then it comes through the other side. And if you need, and if you don't have any bird to you or anything, you can get creative and use popcorn kernels and oatmeal. Yeah, so I didn't have any bird seed before I came over to do this crap. So I looked up things that could be in our pantry that we might be able to use that birds can eat. And it turns out all birds can eat oats. And birds can definitely eat and digest 
corn popcorn kernels, except um, you'll specifically be targeting larger birds, which will be fun. Um, and obviously, as little birds come into the door that we're gonna create, there we'll leave a little lip so that the food sits in here. As birds come in, the seeds and um, oats will fall down, so it'll be available for all kinds of little critters. Um, so, you know, you might want to have this in a spot that is safe and in the backyard away from your house. Um, so do you want to draw the door on the front, Max? And I'll help you cut it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a rec rectangle, then a triangle on top of it. So it's kind of like do, a house? Yeah, you can do anything you want. Okay. The shape. All right, let me cut that out for you. So, this is not the safest way to use scissors. Um, I just do this stuff all the time. I really like to craft. So I'm kind of experienced in it. I poke a little hole and then I find enough room, just enough room to be able to cut the shape that Max has cut out. Max, I'm just gonna leave a little bit on the bottom so that the seeds don't fall out. Yeah. And all of these activities, we're showing you just the creation process, but then there's the decoration part of it where you can add paint and glue and stickers and all kinds of things. Um, so this is the awesome door that Max created. And now, why don't we, I'll grab this little bowl and we can pour some of both ingredients. I'll pour some ingredients into it and then you pour it into the house. Wanna do that? Yeah. Cool. And then Max is gonna keep all these creations and he's gonna, Use them in his yard and in nature and wherever, right? Hey, little bud. How does that look for levels? Maybe one more cup. Okay, we'll do. How about we do the popcorn instead? And then you can add like sunflower seeds. Um, what other kind of things could you imagine that would go well in a birdhouse, Max? Do you have any ideas? Um, yeah, I know it would go wrong. So maybe chia seeds? Ooh, yeah, maybe hemp seeds? Yeah. I don't know, just the, the whole purpose of us showing you these cool activities is just the creative factor that you can find stuff around your house and make some pretty cool activities come to life. already a hole. I know, I just made that hole bigger because it wasn't even actually supposed to be there. There you go, bud. And then after we're done, we'll probably find a tree to put this in. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with one more project. So the last activity is going to be doing little seed starts. So I am going to use a little egg carton. And I cut it in half because it fits in this tray that I'll be using to effectively water. Um, I'll give you those tips in a minute. But... Um, I had my assistant Max with me because I wanted to show you that um, activities like this are so fun to do and it is especially exciting and rewarding for the child to be able to do mo most, if not all, of the project by themselves. Um, you can adapt any material or bit of the process to make it more exciting for the, the child and that really aids in the whole process. And then it makes it more special when they bring their clipboard out into nature and do their journaling and art and observations or take their bug catcher on a camping trip or a fishing trip or just out in their backyard if you're lucky enough to live somewhere beautiful, like the woods, the beach, um, a little vernal pool in your backyard. Um, anyway, so for this next activity, we will be doing planting. So. I have my compost soil in here with some added coffee grounds. Um, so I like to use coffee grounds, compost, and soil all mixed together to add some natural materials um, before the plant even starts giving to the soil. This is really good with the natural materials like broken down plants, like fruits and veggie scraps we're already adding a lot of nutrient into the soil and 
the coffee specifically adds nitrogen, which is a component in chlorophyll, the green pigments in plants that helps um, grab energy from the sun. So, fill it up to about the top, and then I'll stick it in my tray, because that's where I'll have it kind of live until it starts sprouting. Use my finger and just make a nice little hole in each. And like I said, like we said throughout this whole activity or presentation, we like to um, give you tips for just finding stuff around the house. The soil obviously was in my backyard and my compost, and I'm keeping it in this compostable to-go container that I could also plant in if I wanted to. Um, the beauty of the egg carton is that then you can split each piece with scissors even or your hand if it's nice and saturated and just stick it right into the ground because the egg carton will decompose over time. Oops, it's not bad for the soil. So before Max left, he actually made some corn starts. So, you know, we just have like a, you know, a little tin that is filled with my seeds and I reuse them every year. So I found some rosemary. I think we'll do rosemary also. So we gave you tips on how to mix a nice little soil for yourself. And I'll give you tips on how to um, get a successful plant. Put a few seeds in each hole. Um, that's always a guarantee. And then if you do end up having to split the plants, no big deal. And then you just do a light covering over each seed with the soil that's pretty much already in there. But it is kind of loose, so I think I'll just add a little bit more. And I'll show you the nice um, method of watering. So there's the tray. Now I'll just add water into this tray. Okay, you can see how deep it is. It's probably like a little over an inch. I'll add about a centimeter of water throughout the bottom. This way, the plant in the soil is gathering the water up from the bottom and not getting totally saturated on the top level. That's not good. The seeds won't germinate that way. <clears throat> Anyways, um, if you want to create your own compost pile at home, you just have to have a little enclosed area with a little soil or whatever you can find to start and then add grass clippings, leaves, you know, food scraps, like I was saying, veggies or fruit. I do eggshells, coffee grounds, all kinds of stuff. Anyways, um, thank you so much for having us be part of this eco-festival, and we hope to see you at the camp soon.